so how does the, the compaction uh, add to weed problems? It sets the stage for those particular plants to be able to grow. These plants, typically you look at anything that's got a tuber, the roots from the bottom of that tuber or, or bulb yep. are supposed to go much, much deeper than just the, you know, we think yeah. they are. They only go this far. Yeah. No, they should be going a couple of meters into right. the soil. Yeah. And when we grow, when they are grown in natural conditions, what you discover is those root systems can go down surprisingly far, mm. even in the course of one growing season. Yeah. Now, normally these bulbs would be in the soil for years and years and years, by which time their roots are going to be very, very deep. But mm. we're not going to allow that because we're going to harvest them and, and mm. ship them off someplace. But even in the 21 days growing that you've got, those roots should be going down you know, a meter into the soil. And if they're going down that deep, the weeds cannot compete them. Oh, yeah. It's when we restrict the roots to that real shallow growing zone, yeah. they're stressed, they're not getting the nutrients, they're not getting the water, they're not real happy campers, mm. and so they tend to be very subject to disease because mm. they don't have any ability to have the resistance. They're not getting the nutrients that they require. The roots aren't going as deep as they ought to. We're restricting their roots right to that zone where all the bad guy fungi are in a perfect place for them to grow. Oh, yeah. Whereas if we can get rid of the compaction yeah. and get rid of the water logging, mm. um, not have all of the anaerobic processes that are going on in there, mm. set up normal housekeeping for those roots where the aerobic bacteria, aerobic fungi are taking up all the nutrients, solubilizing the nutrients mm. from the sand, silt, and clay, from the peat moss, from the whatever you've put in there, mm. um, from the straw, um, getting those nutrients into bacteria and fungal form, protozoan nematodes, good guy nematodes, not mm. any of the bad guys. Mm. Bad guys are selected by reduced oxygen conditions, water logging, are the perfect conditions to grow root feeding nematodes. Okay. Get rid of that water logging, get rid of the anaerobic conditions, and then the bacterial feeders, the fungal feeders, and the predatory nematodes come back. Yep. And we get that normal nutrient cycling process going in that soil, and your plants are fed exactly what they need because it's the plant that becomes in control of telling that biology in the soil exactly what that plant needs mm. and do that normal nutrient cycling, which is what happens out in the real mm. natural world where mm. those plants are not stressed and they're growing without pesticides or inorganic fertilizers and without diseases and without um, fertility problems. So we'd like to see that whole habitat here be exactly what these plants would need in a real-world situation. Yep. 